are many examples out there in the wild, like the ones I just showed you, where correlation really is silly. But there are circumstances where the correlations is all that really does matter. It's fine. It's OK. In other words, causation in, in many examples is not always a major concern. So before I give you some of those examples, I want you to discuss with your neighbor where are scenarios where the causation actually doesn't matter, that correlation is enough. Which stakeholders, which individuals, which institutions, which kind of problems can you think of where correlation is just, it's actually OK. Correlation isn't a bad thing. Sometimes it gets this pejorative sort of label attached to it, like, oh, correlation, that, that, uh, that means it's, it's wrong. No, there are circumstances where correlation is enough. So here's one example here. Let's say that you are um, the CEO for REI. And you sort of just moved to Seattle. Um, you, you, you now are in charge of this organization. And you know that when people move to Seattle, they kind of want to be that cool outdoorsy person. They start buying all the outdoor equipment. They buy a Subaru. Um, you know, they're, they're the quintessential Seattleite. So the question is, here's the, here's the question I have for you. Which, where, what direction do the arrows potentially go in this? Is, is it that Seattleite, people that, not are, that aren't in Seattle, um, they come to Seattle because they are sort of this outdoorsy person and they get there and they buy it. Or when do they, do they get here and then, then you know, they feel like they're, they, to, to be a part of the group, they need to, um, they need to sort of buy these things. If you're, if you're the REI C CEO, do you really care which direction or what causes these things? You just want to make sales, right? You don't care. So in that case, the, the owner, the, 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 the CEO of Subaru and REI, they don't care. Just like if there's a correlation between moving to Seattle and buying things at their, uh, at their organization, fine. I think it helps to give like a specific thing that the CEO is trying to do. So imagine that the CEO is trying to buy, um, buy television advertising time. And so um, the so, you know, CEO is trying to say, OK, shall I buy an ad in New Orleans or shall I buy an ad in Seattle? And That's a good example. In order to make, in order to make that decision, the, C the, the CEO doesn't care which direction the causality goes. The CEO, she just cares that, uh, that you know, people in Seattle l tend to buy lots of REI kind of over-engineered sleeping bags and that sort of thing. And so, um, and <laughs> That's so, right. Exactly. So, 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 so yeah. That, so, It'd be so like she, also like, where should I put a new store? Should I put it in Seattle or should I put it in Florida? I mean, if you have more sales in REI, that's all, that's all you care. Now, if you're a sociologist, maybe you care about some of these big questions in sociology, like positive assortment. So when you, when you get uh, sort of people that do similar things sort of congregate together, birds of a feather flock together. Or could it be a, a different situation where there's this social contagion kind of scenario going on, where you move to Seattle and you feel, uh, you, you, sort of, you, you sort of pick up some of these cultural um, symbols and, and sort of um, hangings that sort of uh, get you to go buy things at REI and be that outdoors person. OK. So um, we're going to play a little game here, a quick little game. This was going to be fast, so open up your poll everywhere. We're going to do this relatively quickly. Uh, what I want to do is have you start thinking about those arrows, those different boxes, the independent variable and the, ver the, uh, the dependent variable. And I want you to figure out which, um, which do you think um, is the answer. So in this case, uh, it looks like you're sort of moving in and around uh, the fact that uh, you think higher education has uh, an arrow towards higher salary. Looks like you're sort of vacillating back and forth. I would say you're pro the, the bulk of the class is probably right in this case. I think higher education tends to lead to higher salaries. We have plenty of data from governments to support this sort of thing. Um, you ready for the next one, Carl? Here yeah, we go. Yeah. And the next one's going to get a little bit harder, though. OK, what do you think? There might be some cyclists out there. Um, do you think that blood, well, we know that blood doping correlates with high cycling performance. That's, that's a known fact. It's correlated. So uh, do, we have, um, do we have some of you that think that doping is affecting performance, or performance is affecting doping, or neither? I'm going to go ahead and click okay, over. OK, go ahead and click it. Looks like we got a mix here a little bit. A little bit of a mix. Yeah, and this one's really interesting, because I think it depends a lot what scale you're looking at. Here, uh, if you're looking just within the sort of world elite cyclists, um, I think it's fairly, you know, it's like, I mean, it's kind of obvious you, you, you dope and that makes you ride a little bit faster and you're a little more likely to win and, and so on. So looking within those sort of elite, you know, elite cyclist collection, it seems like the causal arrow is running from doping to performance. But if we look in at the collection of all people that ride bicycles, 
Um, then I would argue that the dominant causal arrow is going this way, because most people that ride bicycles aren't very good at it. They don't want to be very good at it. Uh, as a result, they're not, you know, they don't have any incentive to dope. They don't have access to the uh, materials that they need to dope, and so on. And so by being very, very good at cycling, that's the only way you can get yourself into a position where you have the desire and opportunity to dope. So this is a kind of interesting one because we do have arrows running both ways. And depending on the scale of, of who we're looking at, you know, are we looking at just the top cyclists in the world or are we looking at air, all recreational cyclists uh, put together, then one arrow or the other arrow may be dominant. So I think that's a fun one. Perfect. Okay, we're going to do one more and then we're going to switch, uh, we're going to keep refining the way that we think about correlation and causation. Uh, we do know that gas, gas prices correlate with sales of hybrid cars. So the question is, do you expect to see gas prices leading to more hybrid cars or more hybrid cars potentially affecting gas prices? Or neither? Neither in that it could sort of maybe be going both directions. Whoa, look at that. I love seeing the live adjustment. That's kind of fun. I, it is cool. I didn't think it, the first time we did it, I was a little worried because I figured that was a way of um, uh, sort of coming to consensus too fast. Okay, so you guys, you guys have split pretty interestingly here. So this is not a requirement. It's not, it's not even extra credit. But I want you to figure this out. I, I actually don't know. I do know that the gas prices do correlate with the sales of hybrid cars. But this is part of this course is to say, well, dig into it. Just get, just get into the habit of being that person that goes and looks a little further. What do you think the answer is to this? So I'll leave that for you to think about going forward. Mm -hmm.